Hey, how's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with Recording Radio Film Connection and welcome back to another tutorial video on sound design. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and make a kick drum from scratch. So let's go ahead and begin. First thing we're gonna wanna do is go to our instrument, instrument rack, pardon me, and go to our ES2 synthesizer and select stereo. Okay, now that we have our ES2 up, let's go ahead and move this to the side just uh, slightly, maybe around here so we can see the MIDI and audio information that we have in our project. We're gonna to go to our factory default and down to our tutorial settings and over to analog saw synth. Cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the key, uh, you know, C key a few times just so we hear what we have. And then we're gonna notice a total difference by the end of this video. And we're gonna hear a nice kick drum. So this is what we have right now. We're gonna to totally shape this. We're gonna mold this to the sound that we want, uh, which is all, uh, you know, the practical uses of sound design. So let's go ahead and select mono. Uh, this is in our global settings. We're gonna go down to our voices and select one. Over here, we're gonna go to our uh, filter reset over here in our global parameters and instantiate that. Cool. Uh, we're not gonna hear much of a difference. About the same. Uh, but these subtle differences are gonna become a lot greater once we're really uh, manipulating all these different you know, knobs and dials and all this, all this fun stuff right here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is we're gonna turn off oscillator number one. So you're probably wondering where, where the sound's gonna come from. Well, actually it's gonna come from our, uh, kind of like our hidden oscillator right here in the effects section. We're gonna bring this up and we're gonna bring it up to around uh, 0.410 around there. If we can get it there. There we are. So here we are, 0.410 if you could see that. And I'm gonna hit uh, the C key again, and we're gonna hear a difference. So now we have a very simple sine wave. Okay, cool, it sounds very smooth. Uh, if you're wondering what a sine wave looks like, it's this waveform right here. Okay, cool. So this is sound that we're working with right now. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we turn off our analog, and we'll kind of have a little bit of fun with our effects right here. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the distortion to around uh, 7.6, I'll say give or take. All right, cool, that's fine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring down the tonality of the brightness and we're gonna do about 2100 Hertz. Okay, cool. And all this other stuff we're gonna go ahead and not play around with right now. Let me turn that all the way down, cool. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna have a little fun with is our filter section. I'm gonna turn the cut all the way down and then I'm gonna bring the resonance up to around 90, or 0.90, pardon me. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, the reason why that happened is because there's something going on with our router section, uh, which our routing is exactly the way we want it if we're actually on the analog saw uh, tutorial setting. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring this down though to around 20 or so and even so i think it'd be a good idea if i turned the volume down on this to maybe about negative 14 ish okay that should be fine let's go ahead and hear what we're working with now so if i bring this up or down you're going to notice some significant differences <laughs> I like it around there. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing that we're gonna do in our, our router section is we're gonna switch this to our, our sign level, which is right here. And we're gonna go to our VIA, we're gonna turn this off. That's cool. We're gonna go to our source and we're gonna bring this down to mod wheel, okay? If we wanna do a little uh, manipulation using our mod, mod wheel. All right. Uh, so everything is it's getting closer and closer to sounding more like a kick drum. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is go to our waveform right here, and we're going to choose this downward slope. So you can see it goes up and goes down. That's what we want. Okay. Uh, we're not going to really mess with LFO1. It's not needed. We're not going to mess with LFO2. It's not needed. Uh, we're not going to mess with envelope one either. We're going to go straight to envelope number two. As you can see, that's our source. And we're going to play with our decay a little bit. We're gonna bring this down. Okay, that 
that seems about fine for right now. We might go back to this and play around with this a little bit later. We're going to go to our release, and we're going to bring this down a bunch, around 400 milliseconds, maybe lower. Yeah, 400 is fine. That's OK. Um, our time, we're going to leave at off. Our uh, velocity stuff we're going to leave all the way down that's cool let's go ahead and move over to envelope number three okay so we're going to play around a little bit with our decay and we're mostly going to move this downwards that's about fine i'm going to go ahead and take our sustain right here and move this uh, down a bit Okay, uh, I'm going to try leaving this all the way down for right now. I'm going to leave our time off. Our release, we're going to bring this up a bit. All right, cool. Now we're going to add a little bit more depth to our kick drum. Okay. And we're going to play with our tonality over here. Bring our pitch down. Let's go ahead and... Uh, hear how it sounds like now and then we'll add some instruments in a second so that's beginning to sound uh, pretty much like a kick drum uh, this is your basic kick drum really let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like with the snare with a little bit of reverb I'll begin bringing our volume up on this kick drum Let's add a little melody. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and play with this pitch more, maybe uh, drop it down two more octaves, get a, a lot deeper of a sound. If you want to make this fatter, you can go to your, your fat right here on your filter number two. If you want to make it even bigger, you can open up oscillator number one. Move it over to a sine wave. Maybe this one up here. I think this uh, square wave right here sounds the best. Go ahead and hear what it sounds like with it off. To be honest, I think it sounds best without it on at all. But there you go. That's how you make a very simple sounding bass drum in Logic Pro X doing a little bit of sound design. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and leave your comments and thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.